Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if it's your first time. Today we're gonna to go over nitrogen flushing. Nitrogen flushing is another way to be able to preserve your freeze-dried food when you're storing it. It allows you to store higher fat food for a longer amount of time. So when we nitrogen flush, what we do is we displace the oxygen with nitrogen because nitrogen gas is heavier than oxygen. So in other words, the nitrogen gas is pushing up and out the oxygen. So you're displacing the oxygen with the nitrogen. I'd like to take a minute just to go over why I've been so hesitant to go over the nitrogen flushing system or to introduce it. It is because this is nitrogen gas that we are dealing with. It is not flammable, but it is hazardous if used incorrectly. So you really need to be very safe with how you use this. You need to make sure that you close the valve and the regulator every time that you use this. Nitrogen gas can be very dangerous. It is, as I said, heavier than oxygen. It goes down to the falls down to the floor and you don't know that it could be leaking if it is leaking it also doesn't smell like anything so you've got to be very careful because nitrogen deprives the air of oxygen so I, I'm not trying to dissuade you I just want to put out a word of caution okay so let's go ahead and get with this now the equipment that we're going to need to be able to nitrogen flush is going to be a nitrogen tank you want to make sure that you get a food grade nitrogen tank you're going to need a nitrogen regulator. This needs to be specifically made for nitrogen gas, not other gases. There are different types of regulators. You're going to need a hose that will normally come with your regulator. You might need to buy this on your own. You're going to need a trigger and a cannula. And this is what you're going to use to spray the nitrogen into whichever vessel you're going to use, whether it be a bag, a can, or a mason jar. So that's really all you need for it. Let's go into where we might purchase this. This system was built by my business partner, but you can actually get this at any welding store, or you can go to a restaurant store. It's gonna be pretty expensive at a restaurant store, and it is specialized, so not all of them are going to carry it. However, you can get this from a welding store. So say air gas, or I'm not really sure the other ones around. I just know air gas in here in California. So, but it can be any, any uh, welding store. Now the nitrogen tank, they don't all have to be this size. There is one size smaller, and then there are other sizes. There are sizes that go up a lot taller. Uh, some are, just about up to my shoulders. However, I chose a small size because that's what I can manage around my house when we don't have the guys around. And I wanna be able to handle this by myself when I need to. So let's go ahead and show you some examples of how you would nitrogen flush. Okay, so we're going to start with the mason jar. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and open up the nitrogen tank. You're gonna look at the regulator in this window. It'll tell you how much uh, nitrogen gas you have left. This will tell you your PSI or your pounds per square inch. This knob releases the nitrogen gas. I like mine at a slow pace. Oop, that's too much. There we go, that's better. And so what I do is I go ahead and I open the mason jar. I've already inserted my oxygen absorber and I start squeezing and I just go around six times. I'm gonna let the can lid sit for just a moment, probably about 10 seconds. That way the, uh, the nitrogen can absorb into the food and down to the bottom. And now we're gonna do one more sweep with six turns. And that way you've got the oxygen flushed out. And that's why you have the oxygen absorber as well, because if you didn't get 100% of the oxygen out, you've got the oxygen absorber in there 
to go ahead and get the rest of it out. So we're gonna go ahead and vacuum seal this. There we go. And now the oxygen has been pushed out from the nitrogen and any little amount that might be left in there is gonna be taken care of by the oxygen absorber. Now, you can also use one of these types of the, uh, the vacuum sealers. If you get yourself a good one, it works just as well. And then moving right along, we'll go in and do a flat or non zip top mylar bag. This one has got a piece of French toast in it. I've already inserted my OA or oxygen absorber in there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fold this over just a little bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take the wand Press it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Go ahead and fold this over. Let that absorb just for a few seconds there. We'll do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we're going to go ahead and take this and vacuum seal it. And you've got a vacuum seal package. I double seal my uh, my my little bags with my continuous band sealer. So we'll go ahead and do that. But you flush the the uh, oxygen out. So and of course, like I said, we do have a, an extra OA in there just to be on the safe side. I always do that. I never ever ever vacuum seal or store anything without an OA unless it's something like sugar or candy, which Honestly, nitrogen is a great selection for those because you actually can nitrogen flush sugar and brown sugar and you're not going to get the clumping or the big old rock of sugar because you have no heat and you have no moisture in your, in your containment vessel. Now I'll show you how I nitrogen flush my seamed cans. I've already got an oxygen silver in here. I have got a freeze-dried bacon which I'm going to be storing for long term. And I just stick the cannula down in here. I try to get it down as far as I can. Now if you're gonna be nitrogen flushing any kind of powder, you're gonna wanna have a uh, device over the top, which usually I use either a never been worn hairnet <laughs> or a, even just a napkin over it. And then I just wrap my hand around it or a rubber band around it and a uh, stick the cannula through and it helps the powder not to fly. You can also control the amount of nitrogen with the trigger. So I'm going to keep on doing this just down at the bottom to try and flush all of that oxygen out of the bottom. And then what I'll do is I will go ahead and I'll flush this around, start to put the lid on and give it a couple more zaps. And then we'll come over and we will seam this can. So we walk directly over here after we flush our can with the nitrogen. We go ahead and we insert the can into the can seamer and we're going to go ahead and turn this. We've got one roller in there. 
rolling. We'll have another roller in there rolling. And when it gets back to zero, we know that we're done. And now we have got a seamed can. Let me know if you would like me to do a video on seaming cans and I will do that if you'd like me to. Put it down in the comments. Okay, our last nitrogen flush is going to be a zipper pouch, which this one has scrambled eggs in it and I've already inserted my oxygen absorber. So this one we're gonna go ahead and nitrogen flush again. Because there are small, small particles of egg in there, I try to go a little bit softer on the trigger. Then I'm going to zip this up and I'm going to let the nitrogen sit. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are saying, hey, wait a minute, you know, <laughs> the nitrogen could be coming out of the top. The nitrogen, again, is heavier than the oxygen. So the oxygen is being displaced out of the bag. It gets pushed out of the top of the bag and the nitrogen stays down at the bottom. So what we're gonna do now is we'll go ahead and do this one more time. But what I do, because this is scrambled eggs and they are kind of pointy, so I don't vacuum seal these. I'm just gonna seal it with a regular uh, continuous band sealer. So I'll go ahead and I will flush. Let's see if you can see this. I'll go ahead and flush. And as I'm flushing, I'm going to start closing the zip top. Until it gets to the point where it's a little puppy. And then we'll go ahead and we'll take this over to the continuous sealer and get this sealed up. That's on this list is sealing nitrogen packed scrambled eggs. I double seal on my continuous fan sealer just to make sure. We're going to triple seal this one. The eggs did not get in there very well. There we go. And now we have a perfectly preserved package of scrambled eggs. The last thing I want to make sure of is that I show you that you do need to close the valves when you're done. It's so important. So we're just going to close this valve and we're going to close it very tightly. We're going to flush the, the nitrogen gas out of the trigger and then we'll go ahead and we'll turn the regulator knob all the way to the left and make sure that it is tight. There's a reason that I do this, and you should too, because as I said before, it could be very dangerous if you have a nitrogen leak. So that being said, I do have another alternative that might work better for you, and you're not going to incur the expense of a nitrogen tank, a regulator, a hose, and a wand and cannula. If I scare you with the dangers of nitrogen gas, <laughs> Fear not, I have another alternative for you. Maybe if I scared you with the cost of it as well. Uh, there is a product that is called Argon, and it is not nitrogen, but it is argon, and it is used to preserve food and wine. So a lot of people use it for their coffee beans. Now, this has a continuous spray. It does not have a regular, it does not have a trigger, so you are not going to be able to control the stream of the argon coming out. However, it does work quite well. I've tested it on my coffee beans. Now there is one of those uh, red straws that comes with it. it, actually comes with two. Mine have walked off. I'm not really sure how that happened, but they have walked off. So I apologize. I bought this about two months ago to show somebody in my uh, reconstitution uh, group about it. And uh, I used it a couple times to test it and 
somehow the straws have walked off. So I apologize, but that's what you would do. You would insert the little straw, uh, red straw into this opening. You would take it and do the same thing that I showed you with the cannula into your packages, whether it be Mylar, a seamed can, a mason jar or whatnot. The drawbacks of this would be that it doesn't last for a long time. So you're not gonna get as many uses out of it as you would with a nitrogen tank system. The pros to this is that it is relatively inexpensive. I think this little can here was about 14 bucks, which sounds like a lot, but you actually get, I believe it is 75 to 150 uses depending on how long your, your squirts are. So, and then the other thing about this is that I want you to be aware of is that it is quite light. So when you get this in the mail, your package, you're gonna think it's empty. It's not empty. It's just that argon gas is very, very light. So with that being said, I just wanted you to have an alternative. Now you can find this on Amazon. You can also find some other ones. I think they are called paint extenders but they also are used for wine and coffee beans and food. So, and they're all pure argon gas, which is also a food preservative. But this is just a, an alternative if you want an alternative to the nitrogen flushing system. Okay, so anyways, thanks for spending your time with me here today. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments. Thanks so much, bye.